ethos. Invest in mentoring, invest in coaching. I truly believe that has saved us thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, probably. You look at it over a five-year span or something, even over just this first year being open, probably that much. Just avoiding those pitfalls. Welcome to the Creative Coach Cast. I'm Paul Goldsmith, an entrepreneur and creative coach on the show committed to helping you transform your creative ideas into a reality. Joe Pangallo is a CrossFit coach and the owner of CrossFit Spring Hill in Spring Hill, Tennessee. He also happens to be my coach. And I'm curious because, Joe, you have a background in music and education. So how did you end up owning a CrossFit gym? I moved to the Middle Tennessee area to Nashville about 18 years ago, playing in a band. So I moved down here for the music industry, played in a band, toured for a while, then came off the road, did some studio, you know, some session stuff, a little bit of songwriting, then transitioned to the education side, working for a company that did after school music programs. And then basically what happened was I was working for that company based in public schools mostly, and it was an after school program. So it was extracurricular, you know, it wasn't part of the school. We were a, a vendor that would come in and do those after school programs, bring instruments and everything. It was a lot of fun, but then COVID happened and anything extra in the schools, as you probably know, was all shut down. So basically over that summer, it became apparent that CJ and I, my wife and I needed to figure something out career-wise, income-wise for a while. Fitness is always something that we've both been passionate about had found CrossFit five or so years ago and just fell in love with it, found it to be the most effective, also the most adherable. When we were kicking things around, I had always kind of had this dream in the back of my mind, like, man, it would be great to own a gym someday. We love helping people. We love building relationships with people. We're also very involved in our church and had kind of over the years sharpened those tools as well, as far as building relationships with people and helping people So we just decided to take that risk and open a CrossFit gym. We just saw an opportunity in the community here in Spring Hill. Felt like there would be a need. And even though it was in the middle of COVID and there were shutdowns happening, just took the risk and did it. And it's been great. Well, you're coming up on the one year anniversary of founding CrossFit Spring Hill. Mm -hmm. What is one thing you wish you knew before you started your business? I kind of saw a year, two, three years into the future and saw that, man, there's going to be a lot of things that we just don't know yet that I'm going to look back and go, man, we should have done this differently. But for that reason, we right away started working with a mentor, a business mentor who specialized in gyms and small gyms, micro gyms. So we did that from the beginning to avoid that situation of like getting a year or two or three years down the road and having any like major, man, I wish we would have done this differently. There's some wisdom there, getting further ahead down the road by learning from somebody that has paid the price, has learned the lessons exactly. before you did, right? Exactly. And so what has been the biggest takeaway from having that mentor? Probably setting ourselves up for long-term success. So this would have been my biggest regret if we would have done this, which would have been underpricing our services to try to, quote, compete with what's out there. Our mentor really encouraged us to look at what do we need to bring in to actually help people. You can have a short-term mentality with that, like I'm saying, where it's, well, we're going to lower our prices because we want anybody to be able to do it. We want to get people in here and we want to help people. It happens all the time, especially with small gyms, with individuals who are opening them, not with investors, you know, that kind of thing is you start and your prices are too low and you're not making enough money and you burn out and they don't last or they're operating on fumes and the owner or the coaches aren't really making a living, which is causing the service to not be as good and not actually be able to help as many people. So we wanted to be able to help a lot of people and help a lot of people for a long time. And our mentor helped us come up with just valuing ourselves correctly and charging what we're worth. I became a member of CrossFit Spring Hill shortly after you opened. And I remember asking Mm -hmm. you, I'd been a part of various gyms before, not long term, but Mm -hmm. tried them out. And I remember a Black Friday sale, for example. And I said, Mm -hmm. hey, you run any of those specials? And you're like, yeah, we don't do that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't do any specials, any deals, any discounts other than a family discount. Well, and most gyms, they make their money by you not showing up, right? Selling memberships and then hoping you don't show and then overselling Mm -hmm. the place. You're kind of the opposite of that. Like you really want people to show up. It's a community. Like you said, you want to help people. And Mm -hmm. I believe it because you've got a Facebook community that you're constantly encouraging people. You're constantly adding class times and other coaches and things. Mm -hmm. So I get the sense that like you don't just want people's membership. You want them to show up. Yeah, that's right. 
I think any fitness program that people do and adhere to is going to help them. And it's great, you know, whatever that is. But there are a lot of other models based on people not showing up, like Mm -hmm. you're saying. So paid in full type of memberships. They're betting on that you're not coming. And their whole business model is built around these new year, new you specials where you're doing a year in full, maybe showing up for a month and then not coming back. There's a lot of models that are based on that. And ours is not. Like you said, we're based on actually we want you to come and be here and stay for a long time. What is your secret to keeping your clients motivated? We celebrate wins a lot. We do a thing in our members only Facebook group on Fridays called Feel Good Friday, where we post bright spots from the week. And it could be from inside or outside the gym. Common wisdom is that you need motivation in order to start having success. But actually what causes motivation is when you have success. So if you begin recognizing those successes, however small, you're going to be more motivated to keep going. So that's one thing we do is just recognize and encourage people to call out like the smallest thing inside or outside the gym. I ran my fastest mile this week, or I came to class three times this week. And that was my goal. I showed up. (laughs) That's a win. That's a win. Or, Hey, my kid had a birthday party this week. I really enjoyed spending time with my family. Just being grateful, I think, is motivating in general and specifically when you're thinking of things about in the gym or with nutrition. And then, like I said, we're high touch. We really care about people. So we try to build real relationships. We start every member with a one-on-one, just free consultation, which is basically just a conversation like I did with you where we sit down and get to know you. That way we know how to help keep you motivated, how to individualize your workouts. You don't just feel like a number Well, I know for me that I'd been in gyms, but I'd never lifted a weight because they're Mm -hmm. super intimidating and you see the meatheads and it's just very intimidating if you've never been around weightlifting. And what I found with the orientation classes with one-on-one, you really start where people are at. Yeah, that's right. And one thing, kind of a value of our gym, I haven't quite figured out how to put it into words, but some of our members have said that it's like CrossFit for adults Hmm. or it's quote mature CrossFit, which I think is kind of what you're speaking towards, which is that we try to take the intimidation factor out of it and take the potential for clickiness or like these are the real athletes who really know what they're doing. And if you're showing up to class and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to feel out of place. We try to take that whole equation out of it. So yeah, we started on one-on-one, make sure you're comfortable, make sure you know the equipment and kind of what to expect and know the movements and you're moving safely. Then even in the classes, like as you probably experienced, we encourage intensity. It's still CrossFit. It's still intense, still hard workouts. You're still going to lift heavy weight, go fast, do gymnastic stuff, but we try to keep it light, keep it humble. Well, and that has been my experience today. You mentioned being CrossFit for adults, but you do have kids classes, but yeah. then you also, I've worked out alongside your dad who mm-hmm. is what 69 years old. So it's a family affair and that's pretty cool to see people of all ages and it's at their skill level. So he's not comparing himself to a 25 year old, for example, it's at his level and his personal best. It's really cool to see the camaraderie and the encouragement that people at all levels give one another. And so you've really fostered that. Thank you. I should ask you, what motivates you? It is that level of encouragement. You've lowered the intimidation factor, the group accountability, and the fact that folks that have been doing it for years, they're encouraging to us newbies that are lifting a tenth of the weight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It doesn't feel like a comparison game. It's like that's your personal best and you put it on the board and you get celebrated at your level. It is really about we're in this together and we're celebrating one another's wins. That's for me personally rewarding. And then obviously the benefits of working out every day helps give me energy and creativity. And there's the the personal physical benefits, but also just the camaraderie at the gym. Yeah, that's awesome. That is pretty much true of most CrossFit gyms, like the just the camaraderie, the community aspect. That's kind of what is unique about CrossFit. Some things that set us apart is the very high touch and kind of relational aspect of it. Also the nutrition aspect of it, which we highly emphasize as well. When you show up, you don't think you're going to be talking nutrition. So Mm -hmm. tell us about that piece. So part of the original what is CrossFit actually is nutrition as well. For example, there's this illustration, the fitness pyramid, and the base of that pyramid is nutrition and then metabolic conditioning and then gymnastics and then weightlifting and then sports. So like nutrition has always been the should be the foundation of CrossFit. I love working out and I would love to say that you could just come do CrossFit three to six days a week and get all the results you want to get. But the truth is, is that nutrition has to be a part of it. You can't outwork your diet. Yeah, exactly. 
So I felt a little like it would be disingenuous for us to only offer CrossFit and not offer at least nutrition as an option to be a part of that. And, you know, whether you're paying for the one-on-one coaching or not, it's it's a part of our culture. And Abby, our nutrition coach, is amazing. And she works out with us and is there for that to be a part of our, the culture of the gym as well. I know that you don't make it mandatory that you do nutrition coaching, but how do you encourage your current clients to kind of embrace, you know, the whole package? What I'm doing in a free intro with somebody is listening to their story, listening to their goals. I'm going to then recommend to them what is the best option? Like what is the best way for you to reach that goal? And so I'm going to tell you the best way for you to reach that goal for most, for 90% of people is going to be to get your habits in order around nutrition so that you can build that foundation in your life and then build the fitness on top of that. There's some people who will just start with nutrition because that really is the foundation. You, Paul, and some of the other members don't see those people just because they're not in classes or not doing personal training. But basically, again, I'm always asking the question, how can we help? And if the best way to help is through nutrition coaching and fitness, that's what I'm going to recommend. I'm wondering if somebody's listening and it has been a while, what would be one thing you'd encourage them to do that they're feeling out of shape and they don't know where to get started? What would be a good place to start? My number one recommendation would be to talk with an expert and invest in coaching, whether it's CrossFit or something else. That's what we did when we opened our gym. We invested in coaching essentially and paid off huge. So when somebody is a part of your gym and they hit their perceived limit, how far do you push people? Everybody's different. So that's one of the reasons why we started home with a one-on-one consultation and then one-on-one foundation sessions. So we learn what everyone's limits are. And is that really a limit? Is it a limit mentally? Is it a limit because of a previous injury? Is it a limit because of capacity? So it'll be a little different for everyone. But the baseline is that we're not going to, we never push anyone beyond what they can do with good form, good technique. Good is relative, doesn't have to be perfect, but safe movement. So if we start to see form or technique breaking down too much, we'll stop. All right. I'm curious because you went into this business with your wife, CJ. Mm -hmm. What's it like starting a small business with your spouse? Well, it's something that we both are passionate about. So that really helped. Like, for example, music would be another passion of mine. And if I were to start a business around music somehow, I think that would have been a lot harder because CJ would support me, but she wouldn't be invested. It's not her passion. It's not her passion. So that is really helpful. We both really care about it. We both really care about the people who we serve. We've been married for 15 years, so we've learned how to communicate and learned when we're not communicating well, how that affects things. We've messed up a lot in the past, which has allowed us to know what not to do as we've opened this business together. You mentioned you were a part of a CrossFit gym for six or seven years. How soon between the time you dreamt of opening your own, did you bring CJ into the equation? Did you... (laughs) Not tell her until you had the opportunity or did you bring her in early and and this was something you guys were kind of conspiring for a long time to wait for the right moment to open it? Yeah, we were definitely not conspiring for a long time. That's for sure. Last summer, when we kind of came to that realization of like, we need to do something because I'm no longer making any money. It was like, well, what are some things that I've dreamed about in the past? The gym was just like one of those things. And then just as we talked about it and kind of what's the market like in Spring Hill, we were like, well, this is something we could actually do. And so it it was, that was totally out of the blue to CJ. But to her credit, I mean, you know, she's been along for the ride and she's coaching alongside you and is a full partner in the business. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. We're enjoying it a lot. I think it's God's timing that this is when we open the business. So what would you say to somebody that is kind of dreaming of following their passion and starting a business? What would be your advice to them? Invest in mentoring, invest in coaching. I truly believe that has saved us thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, probably. If you look at it over a five-year span or something, even over just this first year being open, probably that much. Just avoiding those pitfalls. Like you said, someone else has been there and done that. And at least as the business owner, have a clear vision for what you want to do and why you're doing it. And a realistic picture of what it's going to look like for you to be in in that business. How much do you want to work in your business? Do you have a three-year plan or a five-year plan? Like how far out do you have vision for? It sounds crazy, but 30 years. 30-year vision. (laughs) Wow. I don't have like a detailed 30-year plan written out. It's amazing. I I want us to be more, and I think we already are, more than just like a a niche CrossFit gym. I think CrossFit kind of has that reputation a little bit. Where it's like, yeah, those are the crazy people that that just do CrossFit. I want to be, you know, a beacon for health and fitness in Spring Hill, Thompson Station for 30 years. I want a permanent location. 
where we can serve adults, kids, and really impact the lives of probably 150 people at a time, impacting the lives of their families and their neighbors and their friends, being like a go-to source for all things nutrition, fitness, health and wellness in Spring Hill. That's an incredible vision. Thank you very much. I think that really helps us get a better picture of necessity is the mother of all invention. If it not for your loss of employment, do you think you would have made the change or would it just been further down the road or oh, that I don't, I don't know if we ever would have done it. I doubt it. Thanks, COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? The yeah, silver yeah, lining, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. The cool thing about opening a gym in the middle of COVID is that I, I don't want to get into like the, well, I'll just say that being healthy helps well, when fighting off something like COVID, whether it's COVID or something else. So being able to help people pursue a healthy lifestyle. Well, I can say this from personal experience that that was my motivation for joining. You don't know what to believe in the news, right? But what is fact is the people that most suffered and the most fatalities were people with underlying medical conditions yeah. that were unhealthy to begin with. And so it seems like a general good idea to be of health mm -hmm. and not wait until, you know, a pandemic. It feels good to feel good. How you do one thing is how you do everything. And I think about how that gives me inspiration and motivation at work and in, with my family. And it just helps me throughout the day beyond just feeling fit. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well said. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate your time. But more than that, just appreciate your leadership and coaching in helping myself and my family and our community be a healthier place. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Creative Coachcast. I hope this has been beneficial. And if you like it, please review it and rate it. That way others can find it. And we'll talk to you next time.